this is gonna be the video series on the walkthrough. And this is gonna start with how to have the perfect start in Link's Awakening. Perfect time for that splash screen there. And then in addition to that, going forward, I'm gonna have videos for each individual section for before you enter a shrine and then what you do when you enter a shrine. Not shrine, dungeon. Every time that you complete a dungeon and you get an instrument, you get the ability to travel around the world and unlock a bunch of stuff. Mostly secret seashells and pieces of heart. So this series is gonna focus on before every single dungeon that you enter having the most hearts and secret seashells. And I think that's plenty of an explanation. Let's hop in here. So, of course, when you choose a new game, you get to choose if you want normal difficulty or hero. Hero, you take twice as much damage with no heart drops. It's for advanced players. We're going to boot it up on normal. Now, you can choose whatever name that you want here. You could do Link. You can make it yourself, which I'm going to be doing. There's also a fun Easter egg of a name that you could put in here and then you get alternative music here at the screen, but you don't actually need to play with that name. And let's continue. As Soon as we boot up the game, we have Link waking up in the house with Marin. First order of business, we have to talk to Bootleg Mario over here for the R shield. Now this is the shield that you're gonna have most of the game. We're only gonna be returning back here for one other time, which is these pedestals. These pedestals are stands for enemies in the game. And here we have Piranha Plant, and up here we have Goomba. And I'm gonna be covering that in a bit. Like I said, this is going to be the perfect start for this game, and what you do as soon as you start off to, to really, really knock it out of the park and have a great time. And unfortunately, there's nothing you can do until you get your sword from the shoreline, so we're just gonna head there now and go grab our sword. If you don't know, you head pretty much directly south, and then when these spikes are in the way, you just use your shield to push them out of the way. They don't take a lot of, they only take one hit, but we don't have anything to hit them with. And there's our sword. Hoot hoot, so you are the lad who owns the sword. Go save the windfish, wake him up. Okay, great, thanks Mr. Owl, bye. I really love how soon as you get your sword, that's how it segues into the overworld theme. Like, ah, uh, that, that's beautiful sound design right there. Okay, so obviously you press B in front of an enemy to attack it, you hold B down and you can do a spin attack, great. Accessing the map, you're gonna have Mave Village and Tarambo Shores. If you hit X, you're going to have your memories, which is everything that just happened. You tab over for your pieces of heart that are found, tab over again for your secret, she secret seashells. In the game, there are 50 secret seashells and there are 32 pieces of heart. And one very important feature of the map is when you zoom in, you can actually put down markers of everything that you know that is there or things that you've explored. So what I'm gonna be doing is as I'm playing, I'm gonna be going through and I'm gonna be marking down areas that I know that there's going to be loot. My hearts are gonna be for where there's pieces of heart that I can't get yet. And the spades are gonna be pretty much for everything else except for the circles, which are going to be for bombs. If it's for something that I'm not too sure what it is, I'm just gonna put a chest, it's most likely rubies. And just with only a little bit of the map unlocked, I've actually put down markers of things that I'm going to make sure that we collect at one point or another. And soon as something is available, that's when in the series, I'm gonna be showing it off. Here's the library. At one point you need to go in here and just check every book and that unlocks the telephone feature in the game. And the telephone feature makes it so that if you go into any of the telephone booths, you're gonna be able to call grandpa and grandpa tells you all about where you should be going. There are two individual books that are somewhat important. You have this one up here, which you get later in the game by a power up that allows you to run into the wall and then it falls. And then this one down here, which you need to complete the entire trade sequence in order to read it. And that actually has to do with the end of the game. Funny enough that it's in the town that you start off in. First order of business, and it's staring you in the face. You hop into the well here. When you hop down, there's a piece of heart. This is our first of 32 in the game. Here's a chain chomp, he's adorable. I mean, he starts off as being kind of a jerk, but then he gets to know you and he's really nice, trust me. Next order of business is to cut the grass for 10 rupees and then also this piece of grass has a secret seashell. This is our first of 50. You're gonna, you're gonna find a lot of them. After cutting all the grass, you might have 10, you might have 20, that's fine. You only really need 10, and we're gonna enter right here, which is the trendy game. We are going to come back here quite a bit throughout the entire game. Mostly for rupee farming, because I spend 10 rupees, I come over here to the purple one, and then it picks it up. I wasn't exactly on it, hopefully that works. 
Yeah, we got it. Now it can slide out either the top or the right as it moves, and we just kind of hope that that never happens, but if it does, then it does. We collect our 50 rupees, we leave, we re-enter the building, and the purple rupee has respawned. Fantastic. And we're gonna repeat this process. Now there's a few items that we wanna buy right at the beginning of the game. I'd recommend playing this until you have 500 rupees, which doesn't take as long as you think because every single time that you come in here if you get it on the first try you get the purple rupee and you leave it's about 45 seconds so every 45 seconds you get 40 rupees in about uh, i'd say less than 10 minutes or so you can make your way up to 500 just fine and here we can win that yoshi doll which is the beginning of the trade sequence we get a piece of heart which is well it's a piece of heart and then also there's a shop directly above us that has a shovel that we need to purchase and there's also a piece of heart in there each of those items is 200 rupees each so that's 400 right off of the bat we have these two grand games right here and then also we need to go fishing a little bit might as well use this opportunity to say hey if you're enjoying the video so far and you look forward to the entire series of this walkthrough do me a favor hit the like button down below it really does help out the channel and if you're new feel free to subscribe as i'm going to be doing lots of tips and tricks for this and then in regard to zelda games we're definitely going to be covering all of the news for breath of the wild 2 as well as tips and tricks for that game as well hopefully it's as big as the first one that's what she said ah see it popped out that time now if it does pop out and it's lying on the floor like that there's no reason to go chasing after it. Just leave and go back in and it's gonna be standing right up again. Great, so now that we're on the cusp of 400 to 500 rupees, I'm gonna go ahead and get the piece of heart and the Yoshi doll. What a rare find, it was literally in this game. I love the, the little squish sound it makes when it lands. You got a Yoshi doll. You can't count how many times you've seen him now. And as soon as we exit the trendy game, this little boy over here is gonna say, whoa, you won the Yoshi doll? My mom's been trying to win that forever because all she does is spend her time trying to win something for us. He's a good mom. Anyways, let's in head inside of the shop that's directly north of the trendy shop. Here we can get ourselves our deluxe shovel. That is the first item that we can assign to either X or Y. And there's our piece of heart. Anytime that you leave the shop, head back in because the inventory changes as soon as you leave. And now we can see that there's a bow and arrow for 980 rupees. And if you think that's expensive, later in the game, there are much more expensive items than 980 rupees. That goes for the crane game as well. We just won all those key items, that piece of heart and that Yoshi doll. We head back inside. And now there's two different items. Here is our first figurine, and this is of Chow Chow, which is an adorable tiny little chain chomp. Chain chomp with a bow. Now the secret seashell can be a little difficult to get. I've had times that I it's taken me six or seven times to get it, and I've, I've had times that the first drop and it came in no problem. It likes to squeeze out the right side, I've noticed. So hopefully it doesn't, oh left side that time. I'm gonna collect Chow Chow, leave, come back in, and get that secret seashell. All right, yes. Okay, nice, that's our second try. That's really fortunate for us. Might as well grab the rupee while I'm here. If you do decide to go for the red rupees, I mean, you're more than welcome to. It's just not worth your time. First things first, I want to get rid of the Chow Chow figure and the Yoshi doll. First, we're gonna head directly north of where we were and where the shop is that's charging an exorbitant amount of money for a bow and arrow. This is the mom who's been trying to win the Yoshi doll. And she gives us a ribbon. This ribbon is actually the same ribbon that you see Chow Chow wearing. Let's head inside of the smaller shack in front of the Bow Wow. And here is Chow Chow. Makeups, jewels, dresses, I want it all. Oh, that ribbon, I need it. Will you trade it for my dog food? Sure thing. We got dog food. It's full of juicy beef. And then in the bottom right, if you dig, there's a secret seashell. Fantastic. And now we're gonna head into the main part of the house. And right there on the table, we could put down the Chow Chow figure. This is one of many figures in the game. A new one is available after every single one of the different temples that you do in the game. They're always gonna be here at the trendy game. Now, I hope you still have some rupees in your inventory. I'd recommend at least, I don't know, maybe about 40 right now. And we're gonna head north of where Chow Chow and Bow Wow are. And we're gonna speak to the fisherman over here. And the fisherman is gonna let us fish. All right. 
If you enjoy any fishing from any of the Legend of Zelda games, it's worth mentioning that this was the first one to ever have it. You just hold A to cast your fishing rod. There we go. Wiggle it a little bit. Well, as soon as they start to swim away, you want to let up off of the A. It's up to you if you want to tap it a little bit so they don't go too far, or just let them swim away all the way. If you don't tap A, then you're fine, and uh, it's not very dangerous. Anyways, catch any fish and has a piece of heart. So we're going to cast all the way to the other side, and if you focus down at the bottom left, you'll actually see something white and blue down there, and that's a bottle. And we just get that if we fish up. You can either catch a fish at the bottom first, or go after the bottle. However, every fish that's in between the bottle and you is gonna try to hit it away. Great, we got the fish down there. Now the green fish are always considered to be larger than the red fish. After a few seconds, we get ourselves the big fish. And we get ourselves the middleweight lure. And it's the first time that we landed a fish of this size, so we get a piece of heart. Fantastic, that's five pieces of heart already. Now, anytime after you get a new lure, it's up to you if you want to swap it. If you do decide to swap it, all you need to do is just cast your line in all the way, hit B, and you can choose to change your lure, and there's no fee for that. I'm gonna let it go all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm gonna use the joystick to tug it into the bottle, and you'll hear a cling sound. There we go. Now we want to reel it in, but we want to avoid all of the fish. So you want to reel it in, let it drop down. One of them is going to go after it. No, 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 no. Ah, see? They're scandalous. This little guy was actually bothering me a lot, so I just decided to reel him in real quick. And now we can go get our bottle in peace. And we got it. Now the bottle is called a fairy bottle in this game, and there's actually not anything else that we can do for fishing right now. At a later point in time, we could come back and win two secret seashells here. Uh, I'm gonna let you know when that is later. Throughout all that fishing, we got up to four hearts, which is fantastic. We haven't even left town yet. So now it's time to leave town. That was gonna let us know that inside of this mysterious forest, we need to find a key. And the mysterious forest is pretty straightforward. There's one path up to the top, which is right there. And then there's one path down, and there's one path out from the top there. As long as you remember that, you're fine. But our actual destination is right there where that log is. Also right here is a secret seashell later. Head inside of the log. Inside of the log is a treasure chest that we can open up. We just push that out of the way. It's a ruby. We're going to need lots and lots and lots of rupees this game. Or to steal a lot of things. But we're going for zero deaths. Now this area we are not going to be able to get to until we can lift up those skulls. So I'm just going to mark it down with a heart for later. Essentially you will push those out of the way and in front of this skull you would lift it up. But we just can't do that right now. We got the toadstool that we wanted. Now backtrack until you come out of the log that you went in in the first place. Oh, our first guardian acorn, nice. So you get the guardian acorns by attacking a certain amount of enemies. And if you do it without taking damage, it increases the rate that it drops. And here we find some rocks that I cannot lift up yet, so I'm going to mark that down. Here's a piece of heart that we can't get yet, and we uncovered a new area. Nice. Now this electric cucumber right here, you actually can't hurt him right now because he's electrified. And only after you get the item that we're about to get can you actually hurt him. And here is a witch, she wants the toadstool, and she's gonna give us 20 magic powder. Magic powder is somewhat hard to come by in the early game, but it's a little bit plentiful toward the end of the game. So if you need to make more magic powder, you can collect a toadstool and come here, or you could just buy it from her directly. I think she charges 50 for 20. Now this electric sea cucumber, we throw a magic powder on it, and then he gets all googly eyed and we can hurt him. Nice. Now that we have the magic powder, we're going to make our way all the way back to where we first entered the forest. However, it is worth mentioning that right here is one of the fairy areas. I mean, it's kind of like a fairy fountain. 
The only difference is that this fairy fountain doesn't give you stray fairies, which you can then put in your bottle. Instead, this one will only recover you when you talk to her, but if you have full hearts, she will not recover you. Ooh, here's our first piece of power. That doubles the that doubles the damage that we deal, which is pretty sweet. And then you also get, I'd say like a 15, maybe 20% speed increase. And I see that as being one of the best advantages of the piece of power. And here we find a raccoon, throw that in his face because, I don't know, Link is racist against cat raccoons or something, I don't know. Hey, look, it's bootleg Mario. He was getting mushrooms. That's so like Mario. And just north of where he was, there's a chest here. That's gonna give us the tail key. Sweet, dude. If we head north, there's not really anything that we could do over here. At all. This is where the second temple shrine is. Not shrine. Dungeon. As well as a house used for the trade sequence much later on in the game. So from here, now we're gonna head back down to the shoreline. Now our next destination is right here. This is where our key is going to go. However, I want to head to this spot right here because that's a secret seashell that we can collect now that we have the shovel. And in addition to that, there's going to be part of the trade sequence here, which is mandatory for the game. And inside of this house with the little pink flower on top, and we're gonna come to a big blue alligator or a crocodile, I don't know the difference. His name is Sale. He wants the canned food. We're gonna give him the canned food. I love that the chewing sounds have, like, a sort of metal aluminum sound to them. Very classy. And we get bananas that we're gonna need much later. Like, probably, I don't know, episode 5 or something. So, for now, forget about the trade sequence. And that monkey. I don't think that monkey does anything. I mean, you can knock him out of the tree once you get the Pegasus boots. I don't know, it just seems like a weird thing to have in the game. Although most of the stuff in this game is weird. And this one little spot right here has a secret seashell. Now we're just going to continue around into that one location that I showed you on the map. Which is located right here at the shoreline. And this is the entrance for our first ever dungeon. So quick recap of our memories. We have five pieces of heart and four secret seashells so far. We also got ourselves the shovel. We went through the trade sequence all the way to the, we got the banana. And we also got our first fairy bottle. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be how to get the perfect start in Link's Awakening. As I mentioned, this is actually going to be a walkthrough series. So tomorrow we're going to have the next episode, which is the first dungeon. And then from there, we are going to be making our way to everywhere else. Do me a favor, if you haven't done so, leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.